Good Sunday afternoon to you. It is binding day. We are going to do Midori binding. And I will be the first to tell you and admit things went sideways with this as well. So let's find out what disaster I created for myself this time. So I have a tray here with all my project stuff in it. And this is what we're doing today. Midori binding. You'll need one millimeter elastic cord. Uh, mine is in black because it's always available. And as I get this out of the way, you can use a different color if you want to, but black is always easy to find. You can also use white or any other color. Like I just said, I'm going to tack this down real quick so that it doesn't mess around with my cord. Silicone glue dries fast. And here we go. I will tell you I had to scrap a whole piece of film that showed this because I didn't measure my elastic cord. And when I, or I didn't measure it correctly and I didn't have enough. And when I say you need a large eye needle, I'm not kidding you. This one millimeter cord will not go through. Oh, are you kidding me? Give me a magnet. It will not go through a standard darning needle. I hope you can see that. It just, it won't. It's too wide. We resume now that I've picked up the cord that dropped. So you need a really big eye. And for that, you're going to have to poke your holes a little bigger than you would for pamphlet binding. And mine are not lined up. Uh, it's almost as if somebody doesn't want this project to get finished. I have left... I have used all five yards because I had to buy some. I didn't have enough. So this is going to be a comedy of errors. But what, what I think the measurement is, is five times your the length of your um, nine-inch high binding. So I put a piece of tape here just to see if I was correct. I have five yards here, and you're going to watch me struggle through it. The way I remember to do this correctly is always to start at the bottom and go down through this hole, this first hole. Down from the bottom. Oh, this piece of tape is going to be a problem. All right. We'll uh, cut it off. So much for measuring. Down through the bottom. It's just going to be a comedy of errors. All right, here we go. Now what I'm going to do, and you should do this for both free ends, is I am going to just melt this outer coating down to the elastic. Don't do that. So that I have an unfrayed end. And I'll cut off any of the fray. We're going to tie a knot. You can do an overhand knot or you can do a surgeon's knot. I originally had eyelets lining these holes and I discovered that my fancy new machine for eyelets and holes uh, didn't, couldn't handle the eyelets. It didn't, the eyelets are not the shank on the eyelets are, is not long enough to go through all these pieces of material. We're just going to compensate for that by doing a double overhand. And we'll trim this tail <clears throat> later, much later apparently. Try and get the knots right on top of each other. That'll add bulk. Now, you are going to leave a tail here. A little bit of a tail enough to um, tie off again. Hopefully this goes faster now that we've set it up. Up through the top. Remember down through the bottom, up through the top. And 
and your, your tension on this, you're not going to pull it super tight. You're going to just leave it pulled through at the time. You might want to hold it on the bottom with your fingers so you don't lose your tail. Now, we're going to come down and in order to get these to line up semi-straight, you're going to go down through the same bottom hole that you came up through. And this will make your outer elastic appear to be straight, as straight as you're going to get it. If you don't go through that bottom hole a second time, you're not going to get a nice straight look or as straight as it can be. So we'll pull these yards and yards of elastic through and just, I can feel with, with my finger on the back that it's, um, there's no gaps, but it's not tight. We're going to come up through the top. Remember down through the bottom and up through the top. If I can only find the hole, that'd be great. There we go. This is so simple, but it's confusing because it has this first uh, setup stitch in the same hole twice. Five yards goes through. The camera quit. So we've gone down. We've gone down through the bottom, up through the top, right here. down through the bottom of the same hole, up through the top of the next hole. So now we're gonna go down through the bottom of this hole right here. Again, we're not gonna to worry too much about tension right now, just make sure there's no gaps and loops on the, on the back. Up through the top hole, Sorry if I hit the camera. Okay. Now you can pull a little bit of tension if you want to, or you can wait till the end. I prefer to do halfway through. I prefer to tension it a little bit. Now, down through the bottom hole. You'll notice as we're doing this, I have yet to uh, remove the tape and affix my spine cover, as I said in the last um, episode. Okay, so now you have three cords that you can put um, pamphlets and so other elements through. What's going on on the back? Well, we have a little twist here to kind of fool around with a little bit and try and straighten out as best as possible. I'm not going to fight with it on camera um, too much. You'll notice that I've taken my eyelets out. As I said, my little eyelet setter just wasn't up to the job. All right, so now you still need to come up through the bottom again. Middle hole. Well, actually, what do we want? Let's let's see if we can fix this by weaving our needle under that one that wants to cross over from the first hole. I might regret doing this with all this elastic. And there again, there's no way to measure it because I've used this big long piece. I think it is five times if you want to be safe. For a three hole um, setup here, do six times. You're gonna end up with a little bit of a waste no matter what you do. And since this was a do over, yeah, I think that'll work. 
since this was a do-over from when I messed it up before with eyelets and whatnot, um, I don't mind that there's a little bit of waste because I was able to use that piece of elastic short piece to take care of another project. Now I'm going to, what am I going to do here? There's a different way of ending the binding, but because I have, you know, so much elastic going in through such a short space, I'm going to go back to the last hole and try and even this out. You can see here, I still have my wings that are not pasted down. This might have been a mistake to do this. We'll see. Nope, it's doing what I want it to do. So I just want this last turn to keep those two separate in the first hole. There we go. And it doesn't look terrible. Now, you can see it's it's pulled to its tension, but it's not stretched. All we have to do now is tie off. So we'll cut. And you, how much do you cut and how much do you trim off once you make your knot? That's entirely up to you because you know uh, better than I do what uh, what tension or what how much you need to tie a knot. I obviously need more than the average bear. So I'm going to melt this a little bit with a thick lighter and I'm going to tie this off right where it falls naturally and I'm going to do a surgeon's knot which is an overhand knot but you go through twice and I kind of wish I would have left my needle on for this because you can't see what I'm doing really truthfully if an overhand surgeon's knot is too much of a struggle for you you can just tie a double knot it's fine. There we go. Now this knot you can pull pretty tight because you're going to cut these tails off. Now you've got this knot affair down here that you're going to have to wiggle a little bit. And what I like to do is put a little bit of silicone glue right on the knot. It's already, the tension on this is already working itself out. And that will continue to happen with use. What should take 10 minutes is probably going to take half my lifetime. Okay, here's what you have on the back. And you can finesse this a little bit. But it's, it's always going to be, you know, sort of a little bit of a fan shape. What does this do for us? That's what you really are here for. You've got your elements that you made in the previous episodes. You made a booklet. You, unlike me in the demonstration, used a piece of cardstock to be the outer cover. We have not done tabs yet. So, how many of these booklets are you going to need? At least two. You've made one, so the template will be the other one that you'll make a booklet out of. And this is how you'll put your elements in. So there's, uh, there's one element. Here would be the second element. And the waterfall that we made, I'm not sure yet where it's going to land, but I think it's going to land on the back cover. And it depends on how, how you do the paste up um, for this. So now 
I've removed the tape from those wings. I've used silicone glue to affix it to the cover. I've turned in all my flaps on the inside, cut little pie pieces, you know, so that I have tabs where I can turn them up into the book. Unfortunately, I will not be able to cover those tabs. They're just going to be the way they are. And then for the next episode, we are going to talk about the layout for the template, how you cut it up and where the uh, different elements lay, how to print it, and how to do those black section tabs. You don't have to do them in black. You can do them in any color you want to, or you can skip it completely. We'll also talk about how to um, format these sections so that you have multiple children in one book. If you're doing this for one child, you know, you're pretty much almost done. If you have multiple children and you want all your children's information in the same book, we'll talk about how to modify to make that accommodation. And finally, we'll talk about refining details. We will put on our corner protectors if you made them. If you didn't, don't worry about it. But you will find that as well as that leather tape binding in last Sunday's quick tip video. And finally, let's not forget the little sweetheart who inspired this Find Me junk journal based on what to do when your child is missing. God bless you. I'll see you Thursday.